Hey there, Sam. Internationalization is the notion of providing different translation to the end users based on their local preferences. A lot of time in the internet, you'll see people referring to this as I18N. Why? Because there are 18 characters between I and N. There's another common term in the web, A11Y, which stands for accessibility. Again, because there are 11 characters between A and Y. But if you ask me, how did they come out with such weird abbreviation? I'll be honest with you, I have no idea. But I'll tell you one thing for sure, programmers are weird, and you are one of us. Anyway, enough talking, Laravel makes internationalization very easy for us. Now if you look at the resources folder, underneath it, there's a folder called lang. And this is exactly the folder where we put all the translation files. And by default, as you can see here, Laravel has already put a en folder, which stands for English, in here. And in the English folder, there are four built-in translation files already. Let's take a look at the auth translation file. And as you can see, it's a normal PHP file that has an array of messages that we want to display to our user in our app. So the idea of these translation files are simple. We will write our app messages in different keys. And in our app, if we want to display these messages, we simply need to reference them by using these keys. I'll show you how to reference these keys in just a minute. Practically speaking, every message that we display to the user in our app should be a reference to one of these translation keys. So by the end of the development cycle, we should have a lot of these translation files. And to create a new locale in our app, we simply need to create a new folder in the lang directory and copy and paste all the translation files into the new language directory. And we'll pass all these files to a translator and get the translator to translate each key into the other language. All right, now let's talk about how we can get all of these messages out from the translation files. I'll go to our web.php file to play around with the code. So there are basically two main ways for us to get translation keys. The first way is to use the lang facade and the get method on it. The get method accepts a key argument where we can use the dot notation to access the relevant translation key. I know the off file contains the key called failed, so I'll just say off.failed. So now in theory, if I dump the string here, I should get a message associated to the failed key in the off translation file. And now if we go to our terminal and run php artisan serve, and we did see that our translation message get dumped inside the terminal while Laravel is trying to boot up the development server. By default, our app locale is in English. That's why we are seeing our English translation in our terminal now. You can change the default locale in our app configuration file. However, if for any reason you want to change the locale on demand, we can call the setLocale function on the lang facade and change it to another language. The language that we put in inside the function has to match the folder name that we put in inside the lang folder. So now if I change it to Spanish, the get function from the lang facade will attempt to read it from the ES folder in our lang directory. And now let's go back to our terminal and run PHP artisan serve again, and we see a Spanish translation. Now instead of using the get method on the lang facade, Laravel provides us a helper function to get translation keys. The helper function is simply a double underscores. And now if I try to use the double underscore to grab the password key, and go back to our terminal, run php addison serve again, and it still works. So the double underscore is really a short and quick way for us to get translation keys. And now if we go back to our off translation file, you'll notice that in the throttle key, there is a placeholder called seconds. The placeholder allow us to dynamically insert data to replace the placeholder string. So to replace seconds into some numbers, what we need to do is to pass in a second argument to the get function or the double underscore function. The second argument is an array where it contains the mapping of the placeholder string against the actual value. Let's run a code. And as you can see, the translation has replaced the seconds placeholder into the numbers that we put in inside the double underscore function. Isn't that neat? All right, let's move on. To get the current lockout, we can use the app facade and call the current lockout function. Let's give it a go. And we see en dumb in the terminal. And now you might be asking, I thought we have set our language to be Spanish on line 33. Why is it showing en now? And you're right. The set locale function called on a length facade is only setting the locale on the facade level. If we want to set the locale on the application level, we should use the app facade instead. 
The app facade also provides us a set local function that works exactly as its counterpart in the lang facade. And now let's go back to our terminal and try again. And now we see es instead of en. Great. To check for local, we can call the isLocal function on the app facade. So if I pass in en, I would expect to get a false here. Let's go to our terminal and run our code. And we do get false. So far, so good. Other than using PHP files, Laravel also allow us to use JSON files to write our translation files. But the convention is a little bit different. If we want to use JSON, we only need one single file, in contrast to the PHP files where we split the translation into multiple files. I'll show you an example now. So if I want to create a JSON for Spanish, all I need to do is to create an es.json inside the lang directory. Now the way we write translations inside a JSON file is different to the PHP files. We will map a whole sentence to a sentence, instead of just a single key to the translation. The translations provided in a JSON file is normally used as a fallback when Laravel couldn't find a corresponding translation from the PHP files. OK, let's try out our JSON translation. So back inside web.php, if I attempt to translate, this is Sparta. And in our terminal, we see the Spanish translation that we put in inside the es.json file. Great. But now here's a big question. Which one should we use? Should we use JSON files or PHP files? And my answer is, it's up to you. Pick whichever that you think is easier for your project. However, Laravel's documentation did suggest that to use JSON if your app has a large number of translatable strings. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about pluralization. You see, pluralization is a hard problem to solve. Each language has their own rules when it comes to making plural terms. So Laravel leaves this complicated task to the hands of the translator. That means if we have a translation, we should provide the singular form and also the plural form in the translation file. And now let's take a look at how this thing works. Let's go to the off PHP files and I'll create a new key called pants. For the singular form, I will say I have only one. And now to provide the plural form of this translation, we'll put in a pipe operator right after the singular translation. So the left side is singular and the right side is plural. Let's try this out. We'll go back to web.php. Since we're using English now, I'll change the lockout back to en by commenting out the set lockout function. And now to get a plural form of the translation, we can no longer use the get method or the double underscore function. Laravel provides us another helper function called transchoice to get the plural form of a translation. So the first argument is the key to the translation, which in our case will be off.pants. And the second argument is the number of the item, any number other than one will resolve to the plural form of this translation. So if I put in one for now, we would expect to get a singular form. Let's run our code. And we see I have only one in a terminal. And now if I change the number into anything other than one and go back to our terminal, and we see I have a lot of pants. And remember, by default, in order for us to get a plural form, we can put in any numbers other than one. This include zero or negative numbers. I'll show you why I mean. So if I change the number to zero and go back to our terminal, we still see I have a lot of pants. And now if I change it to a negative number, we still see I have a lot of pants. It doesn't make sense, right? So to solve this issue, Laravel allows us to write more complicated pluralization rules to fit for multiple ranges of values. Let me show you a quick example. So let's go back to the off PHP file and I'll add in a new key called apples. I want to have three different translation sets. When the number is less than or equal to zero, I will say there's none. When I only have one apple, I want to say there's only one apple. When I have more than one apple, I want to say I have many apples. So for the first set, I need a range. We can use a square bracket notation to define a range of number. So square bracket star comma zero means that for any numbers that is below zero, I want to say there is no apple. And same as before, I'll put in a pipe operator to define the next set. For the next rule, I want to have exactly one apple. So I put in a curly braces and put in a number one in it. And the translation is there is one apple. And for the third set, the range is two and beyond. So square bracket two comma star. And the translation string is there are many apples. So far, so good. Let's try it. We'll go back to web.php and call the transchoice function again. The key is off.apples. 
Let's start with negative numbers. So if I put in negative 1, I should see there's no apple. And in our terminal, we did see the string there is no apple. It is working. Let's try 0. And we get the same string again. What about 1? And we get there's one apple. Let's try 2. And we see there are many apples. Sometimes we do want to show the numbers inside our translation string. For example, I would like to show there are two apples instead of there are many apples. And Laravel makes this very easy for us. Let's go back to our translation file. And to show the numbers, we can use the special placeholder code count. So I'll replace the word many with count. And go back to our terminal, run our code again. And now we see there are two apples. Great! The third argument inside the transchoice function accepts an array of placeholder values. And it works exactly the same as the double underscore function and also the get function from the lang facade. Let's pass in a placeholder called baskets and I'll give it a value of 2. And now let's go back to our translation file. I'll put in the basket placeholder at the very end of a string. Let's run our code. And we see there are two apples in two baskets. Alright, last thing before we end the lesson. Laravel also makes it very easy for us to capitalize the translation string. For example, if we have a welcome key in our translation file, that would greet the user. We normally want the username to be capitalized. Let's say I'm using the name placeholder as the username. So to make the first character capital case, all we need to do is to make the first letter of the placeholder capital case. And just for demonstration, if I want to make the whole word in uppercase, I'll put the placeholder in all caps. And similarly, if I want it to be in lowercase, the placeholder should be in all lowercase as well. Let's give this a run. Back to web.php, I'll use the double underscore function to get the welcome translation and pass in the name placeholder as Sam. And now let's go to our terminal and run our code. And we see Sam in three different casing. So far, all of the examples that I have shown you in this lesson are quite trivial and just for demonstration purposes only. In a real world scenario, it should be roughly the same as what we have done so far, just call the double underscore or trans choice function, wherever appropriate in our Laravel app. For example, in the welcome blade file that we created in the previous lessons, instead of hard coding the welcome message, we can use our translation string. So I'll replace the whole line with double underscore of welcome and then pass in the name variable to the name placeholder. You can do the same for the rest of the app and I'll leave this as an exercise for you. In theory, you should use translation string for all the strings that we want to show to our end user. Okay, that's roughly everything you need to know about translation. Key takeaway for this lesson, internationalization or I18N is the notion of providing translation to different locale. Laravel provides us the double underscore function or the get function on the lang facade to retrieve translation from the language files that we have in our project. Laravel puts all the translation files inside the lang directory that lives inside the resources folder. We can choose to write our translation files in either PHP or JSON file format. TransChoice is another helper function for us to handle pluralization. That's it for now and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.